I'm a police officer, and I wouldn't feel confident reporting a crime to my own force. We've been told to do the bare minimum on crimes. People are literally walking the streets, not being arrested. Morale is so bad that cops are leaving in the droves to join other forces, or they're just giving up. These are the words of serving officers at Greater Manchester Police. They're speaking out to Newsnight about what they say are serious failings at GMP. Last year, an inspection found the second largest force in England and Wales had failed to record more than 80,000 crimes in a year. One in five of all crimes reported to the police weren't making it onto the books. GMP is in special measures. The chief constable at the time was forced to resign and the new one's only been in post for a matter of weeks. What we're hearing is that he has a huge job on his hands to restore the public's trust and the confidence of his own officers. I don't think I'd want to have started my policing career anywhere other than where I started it. That, that's how good I, I, I look back on it. Busy, dangerous, everything that you would expect to be involved in. And fast forward 28 years, there were some fantastic times, but I couldn't wait to leave. Time had taken its toll. Serving officers rarely speak out for fear of reprisals. Scott Winters left Greater Manchester Police in 2017. His relationship with the force is acrimonious. Two years earlier, he'd taken it to an employment tribunal. Scott claims the GMP he loved became one that put reputation ahead of tackling problems. There's a very, very defensive culture. If they come forward as a whistleblower, someone who's concerned about the job, history tells us they will get targeted. He's watched in dismay what's been emerging, particularly after the inspectors judged that by failing to record all those crimes, instead of protecting victims, GMP was leaving them at risk. I think it's dire, unforgivable, abysmal. It's cheating the public. They've been let down. They are a victim of crime and they've not had the, one, had the crime recorded, two, a chance of the perpetrators being brought to justice and punished. Serving officers we've heard from say it's still going on. One told us this. If you've got a drug dealer across the street from you, a really naughty boy who might have a firearm, the chances of him getting arrested are lower than ever. That's not safe. And it's advertising for every other naughty boy in Greater Manchester to get at it because the force is on its arse. Another said. I'd say criminals are luckier now because a lot more are wanted in Greater Manchester and they're literally walking the streets, not being arrested. So what does that feel like if you've reported a crime? When she was 13, 14, something like that, she just became a different girl. Previously, she'd been bubbly, happy, outgoing, and suddenly she started to lose her spirit, if you like. We're calling this mum, Patricia. Nearly two years ago, she walked into Rochdale Police Station with her daughter, who finally found the courage to report allegations that as a teenager, just a few years before, she'd been groomed and repeatedly raped by a man they thought was a family friend. She'd tried to end her life twice. We went in and the detective we spoke to already had a pile of papers on his desk and a photograph. He asked us, is this the man in question? And we said, yes. And he said, yeah, we know a lot of stuff about this man. So I thought, Brilliant, they already know who he is, so it'll be dealt with really, really well. My daughter gave a really lucid account, but at one point I had to leave the room because I couldn't hear what had happened, what he'd done. I just couldn't bear it. Her daughter, who we're calling Olivia, handed over her phone containing messages from the man she'd accused. Then, after several weeks of hearing nothing, Olivia was asked to make another statement at a different police station. She had to go through the whole thing again. A four-hour interview with yet another male officer. No liaison officer, no female officer, nothing. And then she came out and rang me crying, saying, Mum, I've had to do another interview. And I was just shocked. I thought, what's gone wrong? And they don't know where her phone is. They were saying, no, we haven't got your phone. A third detective found her phone, but then got moved to another job. A fourth took over, but he hadn't even looked at the evidence the phone had generated. 
and other evidence the family had handed over had gone missing. She did contact the detective and said, will you keep me informed and let me know what's the outcome? And he said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm too busy for that. And I actually heard him say that because she had him on loudspeaker. I was furious. I was just disgusted because she's been made to feel like she's pestering or mithering them. <laughs> to me, they're absolutely incompetent. There's no other word to sum them up but incompetent. GMP told us those who report abuse would be taken seriously, treated with empathy and supported. It said some historic investigations were distressing, time-consuming and complex, but it was determined to conclude them to the evidential standards required to bring offenders to justice. The serving officers themselves have told us vulnerable victims are being failed even now. One pointed specifically to sex offence victims still being let down. For me, that is the most horrible crime and victims need the best service. We're not only failing them, but the victim code of practice isn't being followed. It sets out how often victims should be contacted with an update while the case is active, but that doesn't get done as it should. They tell us many of the problems are down to a new computer system that went live two years ago. IOPS, GMP's integrated operational policing system, has been dubbed IFLOPS by insiders. It replaced three computer systems that were critical to how the force functions, but it was beset by problems from the start, with its launch delayed by more than a year. In every borough of Greater Manchester, I can't think of a, a borough where memories of a homicide investigation don't come flooding back to me. Until last year, Paul Bailey was a detective with GMP working on major incidents. A vocal critic of the force, he remembers the frustrations IOPS brought with it only too well. And I understand that leaving back to paper and pen now, so full Cause, circle. Because the computer later. system's not working? Because the computer system doesn't work. I don't think it's ever worked, has it? It felt like it had been designed by someone who'd never worked uh, uh, never been a police officer and never worked in the streets. When you try to input uh, uh, um, details of a crime, which is key, if you can't record a crime, then what use are we? Operational police officers need to be working on the most up-to-date and credible intelligence. A simple example is if there was intelligence regarding firearms as an address or premises, and officers were sent to that address and didn't know that, then... Uh, <laughs> The, the outcome could be a, a poor one for everyone involved. The radio panic buttons linked to the system were cause for concern too, as Paul discovered one shift when a colleague pressed it by accident. The system should have located their car, but it failed. The communication suite didn't know who we were and didn't know where we were. Now, that's a real problem, because uh, if this was a real emergency, and we were in trouble, then no one would know where we were and we wouldn't receive any backup. We could have been lay dying in the ditch and no one would have known about it. With mounting concerns about public protection, the police inspectorate did a review of IOPS. Published in March last year, it highlighted a catalogue of serious issues. GMP was said to be prioritising action on the most high-risk ones. 15 months on from that report, you'd expect any major problems to have been ironed out. But the serving officers we've heard from say IOPS is still absolutely not fit for purpose. And in fact, it's putting them and the public in danger. The panic buttons on our radios that are linked to IOPS still fail. I pressed mine and it came up I was in a different part of Greater Manchester. That is a real risk if someone needs backup and the system can't tell where you are. Also, Firearms markers are a big concern because many are missing. If the marker isn't there, you don't know the risks. That's happened to me personally. The system should have said that a person had access to a firearm, but it wasn't listed. If you're missing information, you're putting people at risk, neighbors, the public, as well as officers. Here's another. I was looking for some firearms intel on someone stuck his name in and it delivered five cards all with his name on. Each one had to be gone through individually 
opened, read and closed before he had any idea what we knew about him. It took five times as long as it used to and even then you can't trust what you're reading is the whole picture. You could be dealing with gangster number one in Salford, major organised crime gang players and there's a black hole where the recent intelligence should be. Gail Hadfield Granger's been keeping a watch on the force since her partner Anthony Granger was shot dead in a GMP operation in 2012. She's since set up as a legal consultant and operates out of a high street office in Bolton. What happened to Anthony is horrific and it's, it's so wrong. I don't want that to happen to anybody else and if I can help people understand what rights they've got, then you know we can, we can possibly make a better police force by holding them to account. A public inquiry found GMP to blame for the death of the unarmed Anthony Granger and revealed many failings, including errors in the compilation of intelligence. Anthony lost his life. The intelligence system was flawed. GMP were ordered by the judge to ensure that, you know, this doesn't happen again. When I find out that the new intelligence system that they have now, which is the IOPS, is actually putting more people at risk, you then think, so what actually has been done? what systemic changes have been made and what effort have they actually made to make sure that they don't do the same as they did to Anthony to other people. It just seems like one failure after another. Stephen Watson, the new Chief Constable, is already on record about the tough task he faces to turn the force around. There are improvements that have to be made and will be made rapidly. That is not to say that GMP is a failing force. What he's got to do is huge. This isn't any easy task. He, he needs to be pretty much a miracle worker. With the right culture, with the right person in charge, it, it can be great again. One thing that we don't want to see is a plaster being put over, um, which eventually will then come off. I think these are serious systemic changes that need to be changed from the root of the problem. I don't think this is a quick fix. It's approaching two years since Patricia and Olivia first reported allegations of historic child sexual abuse to GMP. While they've had what they say is life-saving support from a foundation ironically run by an ex-GMP detective, Maggie Oliver, from the force itself, they'd had no update for weeks until Newsnight got in touch with GMP. What this man did has ruined probably the best years of her life. It's given her such bad anxiety that she's on antidepressants, maximum dose, she can't sleep, she's just not the girl she used to be. He's caused all that and he's still out there. He's not even been arrested. Surely they've got to start making some changes quickly because the amount of times I've said to the police, if I come home and find my daughter dead, God help me for what will happen because it would be their fault. It would be their fault because they've not acted promptly. They've just not dealt with things the way that they should. The police inspectorate has told Newsnight it's in close contact with Greater Manchester Police's new chief constable. We understand it's already begun gathering evidence as part of its next imminent inspection of the force. Katie Razzle reporting there, and you can hear more on Gail Hadfield Granger's story in the documentary One Night in March on BBC Sounds. Well, just before we came on air, I spoke to Greater Manchester Police's new Chief Constable, Stephen Watson, you saw very briefly the end of that report. I started by asking him his response to Olivia's case. Well, my thoughts are that um, what we've heard talks to a level of service that simply isn't good enough. Uh, of course, I would stress that um, this doesn't necessarily make for a typical case, but one uh, like this is one far too many. Have you made contact with the family? Will you intervene and will you apologise? I will apologise, absolutely, on the basis um, of if nothing else, the fact that this is a family very worried about a vulnerable person put upon in extraordinary circumstances and frankly just not getting the service that they need from GMP, I'm more than happy to apologise. But I suspect what they perhaps will want from us is for us to pursue every line of inquiry professionally, promptly, expeditiously, and that is what I will ensure takes place in this, in this instance. Can I just clarify whether you knew about this case, whether you had already made contact with the family because you were aware of it? I am aware of this case. It is not a case that I personally have been previously aware of. 
Um, but you will understand that it having been brought to my attention has caused me to make some inquiries. Um, and uh, I am confident that the officer in the case um, has lines of inquiry to pursue. What I will be ensuring is that we do a review as to how we came to be in this position in the first instance. And I want to understand what it is that this says about us, whether there is anything systemic in this or whether it is an individual failing. So I, I, I've yet to get to the bottom of it, but we'll be doing so. We would, we would hope, obviously, it was one individual failing, but we're hearing um, through the Maggie Oliver Foundation of several more, many young more, uh, young women who've come to them who they are now supporting, at least 15 that they've told us um, who need support because they have been turned away and turned off the process of reporting this kind of crime as a result of what they've been through with your force. The notion that there is a systemic failing at the very heart of our process isn't borne out uh, by the evidence that I've seen thus far. There is a systemic failing. That's the reason why you have been brought into this job, because some 220 crimes a day, 80,000 over the course of a year, were going unregistered, unrecorded. You've heard from a serving officer in your force who says, I wouldn't feel confident reporting a crime to my own force. We heard that several times from several serving and former officers. An appalling indictment on your own staff and systems? Yes, it is. Um, what I would say, however, is that the issue that we were just addressing related to child sexual abuse, and it is that that I don't know falls into the same category of broad systemic under-recording of crime. But there is a systemic issue of the under-recording of crime, and it is part of the reason why I have been brought in as the new Chief Constable. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Our systems, processes, structures are, are in need of reform, and we have already instigated a programme of reform okay. to be delivered at pace. Let's look at the systems, then, because the IOPS is the one that we've heard a lot about in the film. Um, panic radio buttons not working properly, so, so officers on the job in dangerous situations were not being found. Firearms markers were lacking. They didn't know who had guns and who didn't. Tasks that should take 30 minutes, taking three hours, a massive waste of police time. Can you say categorically IOPS is going to go? You'll get rid of that system because it's endangering people's lives. What I can say categorically is that I will be in a position before too long to make an informed decision as to the future. What How I informed ops... do you want to be? I'm sorry, sir, but when you've got that evidence before you, when you know that your own officers are in danger and they don't feel able to say that they're keeping the public safe, yeah. how much more information do you need? Well, essentially, what I'm not quibbling with and the information that I do have tells me that it doesn't work. What I am currently waiting for and have initiated, indeed initiated it on day one, I'm three weeks into this job, but what I initiated on day one was a, an independently validated technical appraisal of the recovery plan, which is to say that which we have, can it be made to work better, ironing out all of these issues which officers tell me about? Yeah. If it cannot, what are the options for doing something differently. I'll, what I'll be I really know... honest, but I don't think you have very long, given the numbers that we have obtained from uh, a Freedom of Information request that show how many people currently are trying to, applying to, transfer out of that force. It was 155 officers who applied to go to the neighbouring Lancashire force. Now, that is up from just five in 2017 and that's as a result we understand of a system that has lost the trust of your force they want to get out and i've addressed that very issue myself i think there are a number of officers who are voting with their feet whether it can all be fairly attributed to IOPS's speculation, but I know, I know that IOPS is certainly not helping. It is part and parcel of the issues that have been very, very clearly put across to me. And as I was explaining, I am embarked on a process for sorting it out. It's all very well 
uh, almost encouraging the sort of glib, I'll throw it out and get something else. Well, we're talking of many, many millions of pounds in two and three years worth of a procurement program here. So these things do need to be properly considered. Chief Constable, just before we go, let me ask you something uh, relevant to where we are today. The former Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, we now know has been reported to the police for breaking lockdown laws. Does a breach like that make it harder for your force, for any force, to do their jobs? Well, of course, regulations are there to be enforced and, of course, those in positions of leadership do need to demonstrate their own responsible adherence to the regulations that are set. Uh, and by definition, what we don't want is people questioning the reason for having to abide by regulations. Uh, and so it is, of course, important for all people to abide by the regulations, such as to make the enforcement of the same legitimate. Stephen Watson, thank you very much indeed. Thanks for joining us this evening. Thank you. And just to say, if you have been affected by issues raised in Katie Razzle's film, details of organisation offering information support with child sexual abuse are available at bbc.co.uk slash action line, or you can call for free at any time to hear recorded information on 0800 077 077.